I'm Siku Mike, and in this video, I'm going to teach you to fall style. All right, but not like flying. That's for like eight degree black belts and up, man. Because you know those guys, they fly everywhere. No, I'm talking about the backwards break fall. Okay, falling backwards. All right, I'm going to demonstrate this a few times, then I'm going to talk about it. So, facing forward. All right. Now face it to the side. High five. Again, face and forward. Face it this way. High five. I like to do things in sets of threes. So uno mas. Not sure why I decided to go with Spanish for the last one, but you know, it works, whatever. I only know a little bit of Spanish. And his name is Alan. But anyway, so backwards break fall. Okay. The number one thing, the biggest thing about this is to protect your head. Alright, we don't want the head to hit the ground when you fall down. Alright? That is huge, massively important, especially considering that more people get seriously injured and pass away from gravity than from crime. All right, so more people, let me repeat, more people each year get injured or pass away from falling down from gravity than from assault and crime and stuff like that. So this is very important to know because it can not only affect you um, when you're old and when you're young, but anytime, when you're anywhere. All right, it's huge. All the time, gravity is everywhere, all right? So you want to learn how to mitigate the faults. Now, here's the thing: if you fall from a certain height, I'm five nine, all right? From this height, you can be all right. If you fall from a huge height, you know, a couple stories, 20 feet or more, 30 feet, not going to help that much, all right? So this is just going to be in the context of hey, I slipped and I'm falling down, all right? We're going to cover that. We're trying to mitigate the amount of injury that's going to happen, all right? It's a very important thing. I honestly don't consider myself much of a self-defense instructor if I don't teach people how to fall because from a priority standpoint, that's more likely to happen, so you need to focus on that, all right? So this is why I'm emphasizing this so much because, like I said, man, I want to be a self-defense teacher, so I want to teach people how to defend themselves against the thing that's going to affect them throughout their entire life. So if you only come to my class with one time, man, I'm going to try to work that in somehow. Be like, hey man, fall backwards. So, as far as fall, falling backwards is concerned, there's a couple of things you need to understand about the whole thing and to be able to, to do this, right? So, like I said before, we're protecting this guy, alright? Protecting this guy. So you're going to tuck your chin to your chest as much as you can. If I didn't have a goatee, my chin would disappear into my neck like that. I keep it tucked the entire time. When I hit the ground, still tucked. The back of my head doesn't ever hit the ground, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is slap the mat, okay? Slap it out. All right, now, the thing is what I'm doing when I do this is really dissipate the impact. I'm making myself kind of wide, right? Because if, I'm not a physicist, economist, and martial artist, but when you have a wider surface area and a set amount of force, when that force covers a wide surface area, it's dispersed. It's not going to impact as much, whereas if it's a very small, concentrated area, that force is going to come through and it's going to be a little bit more powerful. Right? So that's kind of what you're doing. You're making yourself wide. You're pushing that out, all that energy and force that is going down, instead of it being concentrated into one part of your body, you're putting it all out into all of your body, right? Now, what I'm doing when, when I come out, you notice I'm doing this motion. I'm not doing this motion, okay? I don't want the back of my hand to really hit the ground. There's not a whole lot there. There's just skin and bones, all right? So I got a little bit more padding on the palm. And I tell people to think high five in the ground, right? And so 
there's that aspect. There's also the aspect of like I'm turning and rotating my arms over, right? So when I do this, the tip of my elbow is not actually hitting the ground, all right? More the side is. And when I do that, I'm also getting tricep. I'm getting the meaty part of my forearm, not the bony part, all right? So I've got more padding. All right? Most people have more padding, okay? So that's one of the things I'm doing. Now, the order of operations on this is that when the hands come out, after my back hits, like this part, the upper part of your back, touch just the ground first, then your hands slap out, right? Um, that is very important because the same principle, you're, you don't want all of that force to go into a very small concentrated spot, so you don't want your hands to touch first. You're trying to get the, the body to go and then hands. So it's going to be head tucked all times, body first, then hands, okay? I'm going to demonstrate it this way. All right, head never touches, okay? As soon as the back hits, hands come out, right? You don't want to go very high. This is better than nothing. Okay, don't have them out here. Boom. Almost everybody unanimously agrees doing this guy, all right? Now, when you practice this, like I said, I'm 5'9", I don't do it from this height. I mean, I've done it several times in this video already. If you notice, I squat down low because I want to practice this, okay? I want to get it in muscle memory so that when I fall, I don't think about it taking this side of the equation. I automatically, boom, is muscle memory. But to get that muscle memory, I got to do it a lot, all right? So what I do, right, to practice this is that I squat down as low as I can. Especially if you're on a different surface, like for me, I got these nice two inch squishy mats. You know, they're, I can do all kinds of stuff on I'll throw people on them and everything like that. I'm fine. These are nice mats. But if you have like a rug or hardwood floors or concrete, okay, this can be a little bit harsher. Um, practice it outside if you can. Anything is better than nothing, all right? But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to squat down really low. Okay, as low as I can go. All right, from over here, see I'm almost on the ground and I just kind of sit back. Boom. All right, so what you're doing, squatting as low as you can go and then trusting gravity, okay? You gotta trust gravity on this guy. Now, if you do this technique, pretty much like any technique, if you do it enough, long enough and well enough, it becomes kind of a workout. So um, if I do it really quick, I'm going to come down, come back up, come back up, hey Bob. All right, so it becomes like this almost weird reverse burpee of like doing squats up and down, backwards break fall, do it over and over and over, get that muscle memory in. Um, the last thing, and this is kind of a, a nitpicky thing, is that I'm actually kind of curling my back just a little bit so that my hips come off the ground. That's why I'm wearing this sash. This is actually my cancer awareness sash. Okay, and I wore this for the contrast so you can see my hips. Is that honest? Right? I want to keep them honest. And uh, so... I want my hips to come off the ground just a little bit. I don't want to like completely fold. All right, some of my kids do that and we call that going squish. And this is what squish looks like. Oh. Don't want to do that. Don't want to go squish, okay? You don't want your legs to go all the way. You want to keep a little bit of tension, but you do want to crunch so that your hips come off the ground so you get a little bit of an arcing motion, so you're not going flat on the ground, okay? Still better than nothing, protect the head, but still, if you can curve your back a little bit, that's gonna be awesome. So, um, I'm gonna go from this side, hey Bob, wash my hips. So I'm lifting them off the ground just a little bit, okay? And I go down, so those, Things all combined for your 
backwards break pull, and you can do this over and over again. Again, base on your surface if you can. Squat down as low as you can go. All right, and then just trust gravity. That's about the slowest backwards break fall I can do, man. So there you have it. Backwards break fall, falling backwards. Massively important to know as far as self-defense goes. There's actually a lot of videos on YouTube about people doing backwards break falling and um, talking about it. And there's even like a Japanese term for it that I don't know. Oh, but uh, yeah, so... Everybody always talks about this thing. It's very important to know. So feel free to check those other videos out. It's called Backwards Break Fall. All right. But if you like this one, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. You can also check out more techniques at thedragonmethod.com. Okay, that's thedragonmethod.com. And I'm going to be teaching all kinds of different things about all the different techniques from every range of combat you can think of like striking, punching, kicking, okay, your self-defense, backwards break, fall, breaking grips, throwing people, judo, wrestling, taking them down, right, covering everything, man, even Filipino stick and knife stuff, all that at the dragonmethod.com, so be sure to check that out as well, and I'll have like links and everything like that everywhere else. All right, guys, so this has been my video about Falling backwards, falling with style. Alright, hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I will check you later. Alright.